Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for the invite, um, the Alliance and CERM and, and the uh, Sanford Consortium. We appreciate it to be here. I want to give you a quick update on the um, progress we have been making as a company in the cellular regenerative medicine space, uh, which actually brings me back to the discussion here in the panel where they talked about, you know, you've got to define your space. And we define ourselves in, to be in the cellular regenerative medicine space, which, um, you know, different definitions of regenerative medicine, one of them being transplantation-based, the other one being translational-based, the other one being cellular-based. And I think, you know, to the point of the panel here, um, it's all regenerative medicine, which is great, but I think it's important that indeed we, we do define the distinctions between the different fields of regenerative medicine. We're a publicly traded company, so um, if I might make forward-looking statements, I recommend you to look at our SEC filings. So Osiris obviously has been a company always focused on cellular biology and cell therapeutics for quite a long time, actually. Um, so that's why we define our field as cellular-based. Um, you know, we were founded in 1992, quite a long time ago. Um, two products that we launched um, have been or sold or partnered, which is Osteocell and Prochymal. And um, we actually sold or partnered these products for a total of $285 million. So it's absolutely, um, regenerative medicine is real, it's a real business. Um, Osteocell, for example, is still the leader in the field in, in spinal fusion. And the whole space of allografts, of bone, living cell-based allografts for bone growth is, is about $200, $250 million today. Today we are focused as a company in, in two business units. We have our wound healing uh, division, where graphics is our flagship product, and we have orthopedic sports medicine, where we have Ovation OS and, and Cardiform. I'll talk a little bit about graphics and a little bit about Ovation OS today. Um, I'll skip Cardiform for, for another meeting. So looking back at you know, the more recent accomplishments, um, we, we reported last quarter a quarterly revenue of 13.3 million. We'll report the um, quarter three results in the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, as a company, you know, I mentioned accelerating our commercial transformation. We went through a significant change. You know, Osiris has always been known as being a company um, scientifically based, uh, did for 20 years over $600 million worth of research and development. Um, we have transformed the company in 2014 quite significantly. We are still absolutely focused on, on, on innovation. That's at the core of the company, but we have added layers of sophistication to really become a vertically integrated biotechnology company with a sales force that is now approaching about 100 people with customer service, um, health policy, reimbursement, marketing, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it absolutely changes the company. Um, and we do this because we really believe that, that the product lines we have, both in wound care and orthopedics, are, are um, in need of um, an, a, a proprietary sales force. Um, we are making progress with reimbursement as well. You know, the panel talked about this. Uh, reimbursement is important. Um, it is not easy, it is highly fragmented, and it's constantly, it's constantly changing. So um, it, it's not something that happens overnight. It takes a little bit of time. We are currently at 50% um, reimbursement, and we are working towards um, obtaining full reimbursement uh, by year end. Um, importantly as well, um, we have had discussions with the FDA. Um, we had a very, very promising and, 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 and robustly executed phase three study done last year. I think actually it was at this meeting last year that the data were presented. Um, and so we are working with the FDA to actually upregulate this space because we believe there's a need for that, um, to upregulate the space from tissue-based products to BLA um, regulated products. I think that only will do good for the space, the industry in general. I, I strongly believe that, you know, as a regenerative medicine, you know, the panel was talking about it being taken serious, being, being recognized as a force in medicine. It is important that um, we don't make shortcuts. It is important that you run the right, robust clinical studies and you provide the evidence needed to the regulators as well as to the physicians and the payers. Um, I'm really pleased that our partners, JCR Pharmaceuticals in Japan, as well as Mesoblast, have um, submitted last week to the Japanese authorities um, Prochymal for both adult and um, 
pediatric graft versus host disease. And as you know, we have an agreement, a partnership at Mesoblast related to Prochymal, and Osiris is looking forward to future royalties on that agreement. We also are expanding dramatically our manufacturing capabilities uh, because of, um, you know, obviously the sales going pretty well. So, I mean, it's a bit similar than the previous speaker uh, in terms of consistent quarterly growth. Um, we did start a little bit later in terms of developing our own proprietary sales force. The company decided not to put a sales force in place right away. Um, we decided first to um, run a, a phase three quality clinical study and after that res results came in last year and then we decided to go full, full speed ahead with a, um, with a sales force. But as you can see that you know, the data were extremely well received the sales force is, is being trained as we speak. It is still growing. We are not at full capacity yet. But as you can see in the last two quarters, the, you know, the quarterly growth in absolute dollar terms equals about the, uh, the growth over the previous uh, six quarters. So there's definitely an acceleration going on, which, which is great. Um, as mentioned in previous conference calls as well, Osiris' strategy is based on three pillars. We continue to innovate, and I would say having five products developed and commercialized in the last nine years is a pretty good metric of innovation. Um, we continue to commercially transform the company and we continue to differentiate our products. I welcome you to, um, to visit the poster session. I think it's tomorrow that we present a poster um, on, on some of what, you know, what we believe differentiation is between uh, different um, placental membranes and the science behind it. So I welcome you to, um, to go over and have a chat with one of our scientists. Um, but as I mentioned in the beginning, you know, as an industry, I strongly believe that you know, science is great and we have a lot of science going on here among all these companies here and we should continue to do science. But, but you always need to ask yourself the question, so what? And, and, I, and I think in order to, again, be taken as a, as a force in medicine, the, generative, the regenerative field will have to conduct the right clinical studies and so you know science is nice to have the clinical outcomes is a must not just for the physicians and the patients and, and, and the regulators but also for the payers as I mentioned um, you know we might actually in the next three four five ten years from now uh, during meetings like this talk a lot about payers and reimbursement um, because it is it is complicated as I mentioned and it, and it is something that's absolutely needed these products we all make are not going to be cheap. They all will have to be reimbursed and they all will need um, evidence to be able to get reimbursed. So when I talk about clinical evidence, I'm not going to go to the, to the studies again. I just want to show you one of my favorite charts um, of our uh, phase three randomized controlled multicenter study where you see um, a Kaplan-Meier curve on probability of wound closure. This is absolute wound closure independently confirmed by a central core lab. So we look at 100% uh, wound closure um, and you have two groups, you have the control group and the graphics group and you can clearly see that the effect is not subtle. This is a robust efficacy that starts after two weeks and um, you know it never even gets close to the control arm. So this study was, was very, very positive and um, you know, it has been very well received by, um, by, by both regulators as well as, as physicians. Um, regenerative medicine is, is great to show some graphs and some pictures, but, but um, pictures just tell a few thousand words, and I think I want to show you two pictures um, that shows you the power of regenerative medicine. You know, popping a pill is not gonna work for these kind of patients. Um, you need something different. And, you know, we, this is just a patient that we recently treated. It's a patient that, you know, is obviously diabetic and neuropathic and has a pretty decent wound of six and a half square centimeters. Normally what you have with these wounds, especially if they don't respond to advanced therapies, they get amputated. And so this is just an example of, of you know, the beauty of, of regenerative medicine. After three applications, we can completely close this wound. I mean, and that's ultimately some things that we should all remember as we go to work every day. You know, we try to develop therapies that are absolutely addressing an unmet medical need. You've got to be passionate about what you do uh, because it makes a difference for the, for the patient. You know, when you, when you have a patient that does not need an amputation versus having an amputation, it's a huge difference. Um, this is a, a, a patient that had a VLU, pretty large VLU, about over 40 um, square centimeters. Again, a patient that failed standard of care. 
we put a little bit more applications on it. The venous leg ulcers is a bit more complicated than, than, than diabetic foot ulcers, especially for those that have been out there and chronic for over a year, which was the case in this patient. Um, you see clearly how in, in about 10 weeks we can, we can close this patient once this is pretty neat. I will uh, quickly go over Ovation OS. Um, this is one of our more recently launched products. We just launched that, actually. Um, you know, as you know, Osiris was the developer and an and initial commercializing company for, for OsteoCell. Um, when we looked at OsteoCell, we were thinking about, you know, what else can we do that's actually um, superior to OsteoCell? And, and we developed a product called Ovation OS for spinal fusion. This is a product that has all the characteristics of the existing products, except it's angiogenic. Um, in the sense that it has more growth factors than the osteo cells of the world. Just looking at this graph shows you that when we take um, you know, the existing um, allografts and we, we use them as control, and we look at um, the, the amount of growth factors that are in Ovation OS, angiogenic growth factors, a series of them, um, let me just show you here four of those, you see as in multiple of growth factors in terms of concentration present in Ovation OS. And again, you can ask yourself the question, so what? Well, on the right side, we, we have four pictures that show you cells. Um, and cells, it's a in, 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 uh, functional test, an in vitro test of tubal formation. And on the, the top two um, the pictures, you see uh, negative control, just cells. You see the, 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 the nucleus, and below that is positive control, where you can clearly see the cells elongating and, and basically just stretching out, connecting with each other, forming a closed structure, which is the actual genesis of a, of a vessel. And, and which is the angiogenesis, and then you just look at the, the bottom two. Uh, one is the control, which is the currently available products. You do see some elongation, you do see some you know, stretching of these cells, but you don't see them connect really versus Ovation OS, where you clearly see those closed structures coming up. So that's a clear differentiation of Ovation OS versus the existing products, and we're really looking forward to launch this product um, you know, in a serious manner uh, early next year. What's, what's um, you know, key for Osiris in order to continue to grow the company is obviously uh, revenue. Now we are a regenerative medicine company that has actual revenue, um, so we have to continue to grow that. Um, continue to get reimbursement for graphics and our other products as well. Uh, we'll complete a confirmatory phase three clinical trial in chronic wounds and continue to work on the BLA. That's ongoing. Um, we'll, commercial, we'll maximize the commercial potential for both of Asian OS and Cardiform. Cardiform is for cartilage regeneration, a product that um, we will partner, and, and we'll announce that um, as, as we get there, and continue to work on, on, on a new technology, a core technology platform at Osiris that is going to leverage our cell biology expertise with, um, with some of the more recent information we gathered in terms of the usefulness of scaffolds to develop new bioengineered BLA products from the get-go um, in both uh, wound care and in uh, sports medicine. And I'll leave it at this. I'm running out of time, so um, is there any questions? Or do we don't have forum for questions right now? Okay. Any questions? <laughs>